Hi everyone, welcome back to my channel. My name is Jenny and I'm a first year family medicine resident. So, almost second year actually. So as a family medicine resident, um, or as a family medicine physician, you see all ranges of medicine um, and from all ages, basically from birth until death. I feel like family medicine, you get a little bit of everything, a little bit of dermatology, a little bit of pediatrics, a little bit of OB, um, some procedures here and there. So I love that about family medicine. And enable to, and in order to have a well rounded uh, learning experience, we learn from specialists, and that's what different rotations are. I am currently on my infectious disease rotation. And to be honest with you guys, this is the rotation that I was most nervous about because I knew I struggled with this even in med school. And so I just felt like a little med student again, you know, I knew, I felt like I knew nothing and I went into this rotation terrified. And I'm sure a lot of you feel the same way when starting something new. So I wanted to sit down today and give you some tips on how I deal with those feelings and how to make a good impression when you feel like you know nothing. Tip number one, show up on time on time as in 15 to 10 minutes early. Especially when you're a med student, it sucks to have the attending wait around for you. They won't, so you'll miss out on good learning, but I think that's a general rule in life. Um, always show up early, or at least on time. Tip number two, talk to your patients. So. A doctor is all about getting a good history and physical exam. As you're attending, you can the attending can look up all the labs online, all the vitals online, everything that was done overnight online, you know, through the computer system. So don't think that you'll see something that the attending won't. But if you go see the patient prior to attending seeing them, you'll get your good history and physical and that is very impressive because it shows that you're taking initiative and getting to know your patient and those are the one of the key things of being a doctor. So yeah, get a good history and physical exam. And then I guess a sub tip to that is practice presenting your patient to your attending. Being a physician, you always have to verbalize what is going on. And in the beginning, it can be really hard, but just go in order. Say this, how old this patient is, what their past medical history is, and what they're here for, and then go through your thing. Um, you'll learn, you guys will learn this more in med school, but that's how all attendings want to be presented to. So basically, I'll give an example. 56 year old male with a history of coronary artery disease with stenting in 2013, um, heart failure with an ejection fraction of 30%, current everyday smoker, 40 pack year history, presents today with chest pain. You always want to start it like that, you know, this is their patient, what age he or she is, um, what their previous diagnosis is, and what they're here for. So if you always start it that way and paint a picture, then I think that will be really impressive. Lots of med students still struggle with this. Lots of residents still struggle with this. So don't feel bad if you don't get it on the first time. Tip number three. So be engaged. Um, what I mean is that ask questions, take notes. Um, for me, I like to carry around a piece of paper and write down all the important things that the physician, like key points, basically. Write that on a piece of paper and at the end of the day, I'll transfer that to my dot journal. And the reason why I do that is because one, my notes are super messy when I'm jotting them down really quick. Um, second of all, when I do transfer them, they're prettier and it's like learning them a second time. It's like that tactile memory learning thing. So that's what I like to do. Also ask relevant questions. And I say relevant is because say this guy is coming in for chest pain. 
um, relevance as in so what are we going to do with his chest pain like what kind of medicines that we're going to give him why are we choosing this medicine over that medicine those are relevant questions if you have someone with chest pain and you're like oh um they haven't pooped in in two days i'm just like okay i don't i don't care if they haven't pooped in two days you know that's what i mean ask relevant questions because it shows that you're actually thinking of the patient and a plan for his heart failure. Eventually, I mean, I guess it's very harsh to say because in the system we all already have like PRNs, like when necessary medications already ordered in the beginning. So when someone comes for their hospital stay and they're constipated, like we automatically order uh, things like Tums or antacids already just in case they develop these things so we don't get called to be like hey doctor can you put this in it's already in the system so for you as a med student to worry about those little minutia things it's like really not conductive to your learning it's like, guess what i'm saying tip number four don't make excuses <laughs> and what i mean about that is so if a physician asks you questions and you really don't know just say i don't know and i'll look it up but for you to make excuses or for someone to make excuses, it looks really bad. Um, it's just irritating and annoying to the person trying to teach you because it makes you come off as a know-it-all. So as a physician, as a resident, as a med student, we're all learning. We're going to continue to learn in medicine. So don't feel bad when you don't know something. You know, we don't expect you to know everything. And that's why we ask these questions so we can gauge what you do know and so we can teach you i say we as in attendings but i'm actually the one learning so i'm more on the med student resident side i'm doing more learning than teaching tip number five ask for resources so it's whenever i see a new attending like especially for infectious disease or cardiology or nephrology whatever the case may be i ask them what resources they use as references or do they give their patients so there's many of many things online that you can look for and read and continue your learning there's also books that they recommend and so i like to ask the specialist and that's where i get information from and learn from and when you ask that they can also be like oh here read this article this is really good blah blah, blah. and that's how you continue to learn and it shows the attending that you're engaged and that you want to learn and you're you're not only learning or putting on a show during the time that you're with them but you're going to continue to learn once you go home so yeah those are my tips on how to impress your attending or how to be successful as a med student um i hope that helped a little um, I hope it helps you if you're volunteering or whatever. But yeah, so I'm on infectious, as I said, I'm on infectious disease, super nervous about the rotation, and I used several, or if not all, of the tips that I gave you today. So if you guys can tell me about a time that you were super nervous and what you did about it in the comment section below, I would love to hear about it. And I'll see you guys next time. Of God, this fly. Gross. Get away. See when I'm... Oh my God. <laughs> oh I'm really pissed off. I hate, I hate flies. Ugh. And, and you really don't know? Oh, fuck.